lies That it's not about me Everything I go through It's for your glory I'll be transformed By renewing all my mind What reason do I have to doubt? God, you show me every time When everything fades away God's love still remains No situation is too great And that's why I say Holy, holy That's the sound of His glory Holy, holy That's the sound that we're winning Holy, holy that's the sound of true repentance. Holy, holy, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 through your mercies, I am a new anxiousness and worry. Try to take my mind. What reason do I have to doubt? God, you save me every time. When everything fades away, God's love still remains. No situation is too great. And that's why I say, holy, holy. That's the sound of his glory. Holy, holy, that's the sound that we're winning. Holy, holy, that's the sound of true repentance, yeah. Holy, holy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 Come on, help me sing. Oh, 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 I gotta know that, I know that, I know that, I know that God's in control. I got to know that, I know that, I know that, I know that God's in control. Do you know that, you know that, you know that, you know that God's in control? Do you know that, you know that, you know that, you know that God's in control? Say we gon' set your day right, yeah. We gon' turn it up nice, uh. Get ready for the time of your life. We bring the vibes and we bringing it right. We're the brunch bunch doing it right, doing it, doing it, doing it right. Cause we on here and we ready to bring the fire. Cause we on here with the brunch bunch, take it higher. Cause we on here and we ready. What's up, Paris? How's it going? I am so happy to be coming off of a Easter weekend. I was really in tune. Like, I channeled Jesus on the cross this weekend. And it really did make me appreciate life, love, love for others, and the love that I have for you, Action Jackson, and <laughs> believers. It, we are wonderfully devoted to each other right here through this COVID-19 season. We got some exciting news and we got an exciting show. I speak life and love and abundance over each and every one of you today. I am super happy to be posted up here. What's your main man? It's Action Jackson. Guess what? What? It's my favorite day oh. of the week. <laughs> I'm so excited. Listen. Easter weekend was off the chain and all oh, because yeah, I dressed up. <laughs> yeah, oh, did you see me? Listen, I put my good stuff on too. 
to come downstairs and sit in the living room and watch church on the TV. Yeah. Now, I had bottoms on. People have been asking me. I only posted the jacket and the shirt, but I did have on pants. That's a switch. And dress socks. I almost put my shoes on, too. But I was a little too tired to bend over and tie them up. What you don't know is there was a bet going on on the back of Facebook. Remember I told you about the incognito? <laughs> yes. People were saying he has on socks, a jacket, and a shirt, and no pants. <laughs> well, they lost. <laughs> I lost $20. I said you did. I, I, I bet it with them that you did. But we got a great show. You all were listening to the silence of Jokia Williams. She's a songwriter and singer. And she's going to be joining us today on the Woo! show. Don't go nowhere. We got way more to share right here on the Brunch Brunch. Looking for a place to have your next event? Well, look no further. Waterford Banquets has over 12,000 square feet of meeting space, coupled with over 20,000 square feet of outdoor meeting space, making this the ideal location for your next event or corporate meeting. Waterford Banquets and the Conference Center is one of the premier Chicago area meeting and event spaces. What are you waiting for? Give us a call now at 630-279-0270 or visit us at waterfordbanquet.com. I know there's something else to talk about, but Uh I'm not going to talk about anything else other than this novel coronavirus. As you remember, and I keep reminding people that we were probably one of the first here in America to talk about the coronavirus, and it has now swept the country, infecting more than 542 thousand people and leaving thousands of victims in its path of this whole like a horrific twister so over 21,000 in the u.s alone according to the data that's collected by john hopkins Hop, hopkins is um that's the, our death rate as the country officially has moved past the efforts to contain this virus now we are focused on mitigation. Once the virus is contained, it's going to be hard to contain the weaknesses that we have unearthed in our healthcare system in the United States with the healthcare deserts, our neighborhoods without doctors, and 26% of these clinics and hospitals that are under resourced, underdeveloped, and underperforming. In Chicago alone, African Americans make up 30% of the population and 70% percent of the people who have died from the COVID-19. The life expectancy gaps in that in, in Austin as opposed to downtown is 20 years. Now, for the people who don't understand the impact that I'm talking about, that means that if you live downtown Chicago, that you are expected to live 20 years longer than the people who live in Austin and other marginalized areas. The racial disparity is so evident in the emerging data on coronavirus deaths in major cities that are considered black cities like Louisiana, Milwaukee, New Jersey, Michigan, St. Louis. And in St. Louis, all but three people who have died are wow. African-American. Louisiana released the data showing that while African-Americans only make up 32% of the population, they, the deaths there for corona virus is 70%. In Milwaukee, the deaths among black people are, well, they make up 13% and it's 60%. Of the confirmed coronaviruses whose race was reported in St. Louis, because they're not, the CDC is not always reporting race and they're not always reporting the That's geographical right. dimension. The, but in that particular city, 55% positive cases were black while 36% were white. Okay, so now what are we talking about? We're talking about the disparity of deaths in a virus that should not be racially connected, but because of the social and financial impact that has been going on systemically throughout history in the United States, it is devastating black neighborhoods. And I cannot leave out places like the boroughs of Queens and the Bronx. Well, the black surgeon, uh, US surgeon, Dr. Jerome Adams said that blacks are socially predisposed to Corona's exposure and have a higher incidence of varying diseases like 
asthma, hypertension, uh, diabetes. And so when you're predisposed to those kinds of deathly, well, not deathly, but chronic illnesses, then this corona is going to impact you and affect you a lot more. Well, because we have these deserts, well, I'm going to just break it down, okay? The first impactful um I'll say I'll say the first area that's being impacted is healthcare because as I said before 40% of blacks suffer from hypertension 20 26% from asthma 22 from diabetes and the problem just compounds when you have a lack of access to affordable healthcare because if you could manage those then you wouldn't have that predisposition because it would be managed, right? Well, it's created a higher, more exaggerated predisposition because of that. So our healthcare options lack in full effectiveness due to the unconstructed health ecosystem that mainly lacks supermarkets to provide fresh fruits and, fruits and vegetables and a lack of transportation to those supermarkets when there's a, a, a supermarket desert. So the lack of life-saving equipment and under-resourced medical facilities is placed with black, black, black people, death of black, black, black. The second issue that we're going to talk about and where it's impacting is this mass incarceration. We make up 13% of the entire population and 80% of the prison population. The prison guards now are starting to spike in cases and therefore affecting black disproportionately because they're going out, they're bringing the the virus back into the prison, and they can't socially isolate. Prisoners can't socially isolate. They don't even have soap, guys. For a lot of people who have relatives in the, in the penal system, they do not have life-saving equipment in order to cut down on the spread of this infectious disease. Moreover, our government is slow to react and and moving on things like granting elderly clemency and, and nonviolent prisoner release consideration, chronically ill release consideration, and drastic time all for what? Drastic measures. Now, I don't know about you, Marcel, but I say these are some pretty drastic times. And the next section that's impacting Black people in mass is financially. So economists drive home the practice of the premise that a standard safety net equates to a set aside of six months worth of expenses. Well, for black and brown communities whose average median income is about $39,312 compared to other races, that's $60,366. Well, that's almost unattainable. So we don't have that financial nest egg so when we are shut down and we cannot go to our two and three jobs that just make our ends meet that we can effectively continue to live and live life as it's in comfort just me just meager comforts right one out of ten families is affected by this corona and that means if the affected family member is the primary earner guess what that family is dismantled devastated and children are scattered all over the place. If, in fact, that affected person with corona actually died, I shudder to think about this. Well, I read a report today that... I'm not finished. Hold up. Oh, just hold up. Lord. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the financial. Just a quick point. Okay. Uh, one in three renters did not pay their rent in the, at the beginning of April. Yeah, because they couldn't. Right. They don't have jobs. They don't have the means to pay their rent. It's not that they don't want to pay their rent. They don't have it. So, so what was the exclusive? What was used to be exclusively regarded as a medical disaster for Black people in America is quickly becoming a financial and a social holocaust. Worldwide, the impact is about 6.2%. That means that we have a 93.8% survival rate. Now, I know a lot of times we don't talk about who's surviving because this disease is spreading so fast. That means that one in 100 people died. But it's 10 times more rapidly taking people's lives than a regular flu. So we got 1.8 million people globally that are affected or diagnosed and 116,000 deaths. Well, the death rise is about 3.97% in the US, 
which means that in the U.S., our survival percentage is 96.3%. That means one in 25 people are dying in the U.S. But 558,526 cases that we have diagnosed, now that's not to include the people that are not diagnosed as of yet, and 22,000 deaths. Now, why is that important uh, besides the obvious reasons? Because it is projected that in the coming weeks, we are going to rise to about 60,000 deaths, 2 million people affected. And of those 60,000 deaths, 30,000 of them are going to be Black Americans. So wow, it's, it's really, really bad. You got about 1,264 Black cities in America, and it's going to sweep across those Black cities and impact Black people like no other. Even in the swine flu, I mean, the Spanish flu, it didn't kill as many people. There's nothing besides slavery that has killed as many people as this coronavirus. And I, I just say, you know, we have to really bear down. We have to gear up and really hold our elected officials accountable, but we also have to hold ourselves accountable. I was very impressed last night because Diddy, has a show of Revolt TV and it's on YouTube. And he collected an assembly of experts in the field that came on last night. It was very late, about 11 o'clock. And not even just talked about the problem, but talked about the solutions. A lot of times we don't know that we need to come up with a solution and we don't have a direction as to how to come up with a solution unless someone gives it to us. So I was very happy that we gave it to ourselves. So what does that mean? That means that we have to be proactive about mitigating this disease and the impact that it's having on our community because nobody else is gonna do it for us. So that what, is, how does, what does that look like? That means that if you have elderly people that, or people that are not elderly but have predispositions, you take care of them. If that means that you have to go and bring them life-saving drugs, medicine, homeopathic medicines, then you do it, leave it on the porch so that you're not in, in, impacted or affected, but definitely, Take care of your own. This is where we grow our own. We grow our own heroes. We're not waiting on governors. We're not waiting on presidents. You become the president of your block with your family. Well, speak, look, speaking of not waiting on governors, President Trump said he's not waiting on the governors to open up the country. It's his job to do it. Okay. So now that's where our good sense comes in, right? <laughs> we have to weigh our... Science. We have to weigh our options and see, does that make sense? I know we have to go to work, but at what cost? That's the question. I don't need an answer, but you need an answer. But surprisingly, there are countries that have zero death. And a lot of those countries are in African nations. Uganda, zero. Laos, zero. Uh, you, uh, I said uh, Uganda. Madagascar, zero. R Rwanda, zero. We need to see what they're doing. And I don't know if they're just under-reporting, but even under-reporting at zero means that your impact is far less than the rest of the world. And maybe we just need to go down the path that they've already blazed. I don't think they're under-reporting. I think um, Africa is the mother continent, the mother of the world. And that's why they want to test the vaccine on a continent in countries where people have zero deaths reporting. What okay, sense well, does that make? More, more options there so they don't flood Africa. Aruba, zero. French Guiana, zero. Mozambique, which is Africa, zero. Chad, Fiji, St. Lucia, Mongolia, Dominica. Those well, I'm flying to the beach. No. You I'm can't. going to Fiji. I'm out. No, because there's a travel ban, in case you forgot. I know it costs $2 to get there, but it's a travel ban. They still traveling. I got people still flying out. Okay, well, tell those people to look at our mayor's information and save lives. Stay <laughs> home. Stay well. home. Well, I don't know if there's anything else to say about that. There's now a time for us to do something about it. And what we need to do is what we suggested. I know that there are people all over getting this information and giving it to you. It's what you do with the information with the coming weeks is what we're going to be looking at. But we got a hot show for you today. And of course, we always want to bring you news that you can use. We get it down from 12 to 1. It's right here on The Brunch Brunch. <laughs> 
Premier Child Care Centers is like a second home. Our passionate professionals invite your family to become part of ours. Watch your child in real time interacting in the classrooms from your internet devices. Invite out of town family members to do the same and watch them grow. At Premier Child Care, we develop the whole child and develop their cognitive, social, physical skills two years ahead of their preschool counterparts. Healthy meal choices and a relaxed family style make a healthy body. Go to www.thepremierchildcare.com and pick a center near you. Where's the action, Jackson? I'll tell you what's going on. Well, what's going on is I'm going to take it a little lighter. I didn't know if I wanted to do a what's going on or a what's in the caucasity, but I believe they both go hand in hand on this story. So earlier this month, Governor Tom Wolf asked Pennsylvania residents to wear a cloth mask whenever they leave their houses in an effort to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Last week, SEPTA, which is public transportation, Mm -hmm. took that request one ill-advised step further and instituted a mandate that riders wear a mask while in transit. That requirement was swiftly reversed once footage of the incident went viral on social media. So I'm going to show you today, I have the clip queued and ready. I'm going to show you what happened. Let's see. Let me share the audio. Bear with me. Here we go. Now. What the fuck am I holding on to? Yo, you gonna feel it, man. What the fuck y'all calling me, Now, so all of that happened. About six police officers, the Philadelphia Police Department said Friday afternoon that the incident began that morning with a 911 call about a disturbance on a SEPTA bus at 1100 Market Street. A SEPTA bus driver requested that the man leave the bus several times and the passenger refused, said a police spokesperson. The officers arrived and ordered the male to leave the bus several times. The male refused, at which point the officers physically removed him. So you saw about six or seven officers, they got on this bus and they grabbed this black man and took him off because he did not have a mask on. But if we if we go back a few days, the CDC requested that we don't wear masks and that we leave them to the healthcare workers and essential workers. And the governor of Philadelphia never made it a mandate. He just suggested that you don't go out. But public transportation in Philly decided that they were gonna make it a rule and start yanking black folks off the bus. Hmm. Well, that's the conflicting information that people are getting. and. If you don't make it a law, if it's not a emergency rule and you don't notify people, it's against the law for you to take those kinds of measures to and 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 really violate people's civil rights. That's what that was. Now, he they were physically removing him. That's just that's, that's Now we know and I'm no conspiracy theorist, but I will say this. I know you are. Philly has a large African-American population. Yes, it does. Now, out of all the cities in Philadelphia, why was Philly the only one to implement such harsh measures? Is well, it because- you know, You're having a, 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 a really hard time for a long time with race relations. We've been reporting it on the Brunch Bunch. Oh yeah. Philadelphia has been b- being hit a lot. So that they definitely don't want that kind of bad press over there. Race relations were just about to start to try to stitch back together because they have been tattered for uh, probably probably two or more years, but we've just been, re- been reporting it for about two years. Now, I'm no Trump fan, but I do understand what he was saying when I was reading about um, on the federal level, because you just said we're getting so many different information from so many authorities, cities, local townships, the state, then the federal government, and right. it's like, okay, can we get one central message across the board? If we're going to say you got to have a mask on on the bus, then do it. Because then I heard an official say, well, you don't need a mask on while you're driving in your car. But then I heard somebody else say, you should have a mask on while you're driving in your car. So it's like. It just depends it's, on what you're listening to and what you're hearing throughout the day. So and I guess if you're listening to the Brunch Bunch, you 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 know, you get good info. <laughs> 
exactly. So what is the standard here in Illinois? Are we supposed to wear a mask or are we not supposed to wear them? I want to be very clear because I don't want to repeat that. That's no, I definitely don't. But look, I'm urging people to stay off public transportation if you can, because there's so many people on there. But the governor, Governor Prisker said that he's asking you should have a mask on when you go out. It's yeah. not mandatory. It's not a law. They're not going to hopefully slap you and snatch you off a bus. Well, you never know, depending on what side of town you're in. Yeah, <laughs> but um, in Philly, though. He was no. <laughs> but they reversed that as soon as that video was posted. Uh, well, they didn't have to reverse it. because All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. So SEPTA made it a requirement, but okay. then they reversed it after the video. Oh, I just have one question. When does SEPTA or our equivalent CTA start making laws? I guess they can make rules for their transportation. Yeah, rules being first of all, let's let's keep it real. Okay, you... transportation. That means public dollars fund that transportation service. So when you make rules, your rules are supposed to come from whatever the guiding principles which were established by the law. So you can make rules to say you gotta pay. You can make rules to say if somebody is stand, if somebody is uh, sitting down and there's no seats. For, I mean, if there's no seats, then you can stand up and hang on to the grip bars. And you can also make rules that if there's no room, we can we have the right to pass you up until we get room. But to make somebody wear a mask, that's like saying you gotta wear blue jeans on this bus. Now, I read Twitter and in Philadelphia, a gentleman tweeted that they've shut down several of the bus stops and train stations. So he said he had to walk like a mile to another stop. And then when he got there, they would not allow him into the train station because his face wasn't covered. He said he had to literally take his T-shirt off and wrap it around his face before they would allow him to get on the train. And what did that do? The T-shirt wrapping around his face? What did that do? Has anybody started watching uh, Containment? I've been watching that lately. It's a Netflix show, and it talks about a deadly virus, and it's centrally uh, focused in Atlanta and how they did a cordon and all of the lies that they were telling, when I say they, that the officials were telling to the public so that they wouldn't have a mass pandemonium. Mm -hmm. However, it did not help. People were looting. I don't want to give it away, but I am going to say that they had some very good strains of information that we can have as takeaways in there. So it would be a good idea if you're not doing anything, <laughs> which maybe... Now, is that a movie or a show? It's episodic. Yeah, it's, it's different episodes. Oh, I'm like, that sounds like a virus. It's episodic. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> And Sonium at its finest. Well, we're going to keep the party going, guys. I know that you're going to do the right thing. And I'm not just talking to the public in general. I'm talking to our police departments and anybody who has the official capacity to make decisions. You're going to make the right decisions so that people's... First of all, we're all anxious now about being outside. I know for me, when I go outside automatically I feel something different about the air quality. Now, I don't know. If it's it's, it's up here. Dramatic, but it's I, in your mind. Yeah, so I, I start doing the hold your breath test for 10 seconds. And if I get to 15, I'm in a panic because I'm like, oh, I was at 20 yesterday. Now, I want to say so. I'm glad you said that. And I'm going to put myself on blast. Yesterday, we had Easter brunch at my house. Now, it was just me and Valencia. But I picked up, shout out to Batters and Berries. I picked up food, and when I ordered it, I didn't expect so much. So we had waffles, lamb chops, eggs, hash browns. Then I made waffles because Valencia doesn't eat uh, French toast, but it was pans full of food. And so I called a few friends, and I said, listen, I got some extra food. You could come pick it up on the porch, and we'll be good. Otis, my 78-year-old best friend, was one of those people to come pick up a plate. And I told Valencia, I said, you know what? I'm going to let Otis in. I haven't seen Otis in weeks. I'm going to Lysol him at the door, make him hand sanitized. And so he had his mask on. He came in. He sat down at the table six feet away from me. And why did my chest start hurting? I was like, <laughs> I said, Valencia, as soon as Otis walked in the room, I feel so sick. 
don't you don't you watch contain everybody else can watch containment you are banned from watching containment however you were right to have those kinds of anxiety filled uh emotions about even letting anybody in so i mean everybody is on guard absolutely everybody's on guard so don't take it personal uh and don't get your feelings hurt it is personal people want to preserve their lives they want to be around for their family and they also want you to do the same but we got a great guest today and i don't know that uh clicker because that's what we have now right i don't want you yeah. to that mouth we're gonna be right back in a month in a minute we get it done from 12 to 1 right here on the brunch Church View Supportive Living is a beautiful, comfortable, and cost-effective solution for seniors, 65 and better, struggling to live alone. Church View Supportive Living offers private studios and one-bedroom apartments, 24-hour nursing care, three restaurant-style meals, snacks daily, weekly housekeeping and laundry services, a full activity program, and transportation. Church View is a great alternative to nursing home care. Located at 2626 West 63rd Street in Chicago. So I, I came in too fast <laughs> and my computer screen, but I, you know what? I'm going to do this because I'm so excited to have our guest today. I am a new, I'm her new biggest fan. You know what? I've been researching and listening to music, but our guest today is Jokia to capture the heart of God while simultaneously compelling others to an intimate relationship with Christ. Jokia, that is Jokia in a nutshell. A guitar player, singer, and songwriter, she aims to deliver a sound that makes an impression on every heart that lends their ear to her message through music. This can be seen quite evidently in her debut single, Amen, which garnered the type of traction that is uncommon yet impressive for a release not supported by a record label or major marketing company. Prior to the digital release of Amen, Jokia offered a soul stirring performance of the song at Marquis Bones 2015 Discover Conference that landed her a demo recording deal. Since then, she has released numerous songs, numerous videos. She is anointed. You can feel the spirit of God through her music. And we're going to play one of her newest songs uh, right now. Right now. <laughs> Love came rushing in, so fear couldn't have me. I thought about giving up, but what did when you promise me? In the beginning, you redeemed me to establish purpose in me. Yeah. Then it's when you spoke to me and told me to walk and believe. Yeah, and who do you say I am? Lead me to still waters, lead me to your altar, Yahweh, Yahweh, that's what I call you. Lead me to still waters, lead me to your altar, Yahweh, Yahweh, and you will believe. Love came rushing in, so fear couldn't have me. I thought about giving up, but watching what you promised me. In the beginning, you redeemed me to establish purpose in me. Yeah. And then that's when you spoke to me and told me to walk and believe. Yeah. And who do you say I am? That's what he said to me, yeah. And who do you say I am? Lead me to steal what is a lead me to your to Yahweh, Yahweh. That's what I call you. Lead me to steal what
Um, I think we're having some technical difficulties, Marcel. Down altars, built on false beliefs. Cause I put my trust in Yahweh. Cause I give my yes to Yahweh. Tearing down all cause they don't look like you, Jesus. Tearing down all. I muted. I <laughs> wow. Oh <my laughs> what a God, song. So much more to Jokia Williams than just being a singer and a songwriter. She is anointed, and that voice is evidenced by her anointing. She's a wife to Benjamin, and she's a mother of two amazing daughters. Let's give a wonderful brunch bunch welcome to Jokia Williams. Woo! Oh my God, you are so amazing. I love your songs. I love your sound, your look, everything about you. Now, some highlights about her career, you guys. You don't want to miss this one. She is number 29 on the Christian gospel. Woo, 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 woo. She is number 26 on Christian. Well, that was Christian gospel album. Now she's on 26 on Christian album sales. Heart Seekers South Central number seven and the Nielsen Sound Scan and GMA Gospel Sales number four, yes! And you know what? You are on your way to number one. You have such a great presence. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh-oh, Jokia, we having some technical difficulties with hearing you. you make sure your make mic is muted. I mean, make sure your mic is unmuted. It's unmuted on our end. Technology for you. <laughs> yeah, you know, it. Uh, last night when I was looking at the revolt with Diddy, lots of techni technical difficulties, but we got the message. So, you know, the devil is a liar, right? And that's whenever, it. Whenever you got uh, confusion, you know that's not of God. So we're just going to work this out while she gets that together. In the meantime, we're going to talk about her. Yes. What it's all about. Now we started the show out. We we still can't hear you, Jokia. We started the show out with one of her songs, "Not Forgotten," yes. which was very good. And I, I'm praying. I'm on Lucia saying this sound is gonna come on because Jokia is gonna perform live for us today. I know, but you know what? One of the impactful song lyrics in her song was about fear cannot have me. And right now, that's the message that we want to drive home here on the Brunch Bunch because well, while we're experiencing this shelter and care, a lot of people are anxiety filled. A lot of people are fearful because they don't know the future. If this was something that people had had an experience base, something to refer to, probably would have reduced the fear. However, we want to encourage you people to always keep the faith and faith and fear cannot occupy the same space. So if you have to choose one, I say choose faith. What's up, Jaki? Are you back? No, not yet. I'm gonna suggest this: come out, come complete, and come back in. All the and, way back in. Yeah, make sure you allow access to your mic. In the meantime, and then we're gonna bring you right back up when you come back in. Yeah, Jokia is an amazing talent. You know, I had first heard about her before the um quarantine and she was making her way up the charts she was like at two million followers on uh, social media because of all of the social media activity <coughs> excuse me you know when people cough now they look at you crazy yeah, yeah. listen i almost took you off the screen when you start yeah, you're, now, <laughs> if you're in virtual expanse of them if you're in virtual space of them or if you're in physical space i mean you cough it's like that's the same thing with containment but containment was more so mimicking the Ebola virus than this coronavirus because once you started coughing it was almost 100 percent impact and 100 percent death so yes. i'm going to the yeah. of your offices can you yes okay. yeah. <laughs> how are you sweetheart i'm doing great i'm so excited this audio is working no i know yes well, we I, win, the devil loses. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. I just got to do a little housekeeping first. Your hair is fat. Thank you. <laughs> well, now, when did you start singing and writing music? Um, you know what? I started singing at 12, 
And then, um, you know, I think when I was in the army, I'm an army veteran. I was in the army. And then it was this guy that was evangelizing to me. He was like, you should sing for the Lord. And I'm like, no, I love R&B. And he was like, no, trust me, you should sing for the Lord. And uh, when I did give my life to Christ, I don't, I can't even remember. Like, I just started singing for God and writing songs. And I played um, guitar in 2008. So that kind of shifted me writing. So I would say I've been singing since 12. And I would say really being a strong writer in 2008 in Iraq. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love it. Jakia, why was it important for you to pursue your dreams of being an artist? You know what? Honestly, I was at my church, being in the banging on my little guitar in the back, in the background, <laughs> enjoying my little self. And then um, three different people um, that I don't know came up to me and told me, hey, listen, this is something that God wants you to do. It's time for you to um, sing. It's time for you to get out there. And I'm like, these are three people. And, and it was consecutive. And so I said, OK, I have to be obedient. And um, that's when I started pursuing it from there, like really taking it serious in 2015. That's awesome. Yeah. Where does your inspiration come from writing your new song? Which, by the way, I, I love it. Yahweh. Love. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let me tell y'all. Honestly, I was about to throw in the towel after, once 2015 came, I got into the, you know, industry and singing. And I'm like, you know what? This is harder than it, you know, may appear to be. And so I'm like, I'm about to throw in the towel. And I realized I throw in the towel, it's about to be more laundry. So I'm like, you know what? Can't do it. <laughs> I love that. So, um, but I told God, I was like, no, I don't think this is for me. And um, he said, well, who, who do you say that I am? Um, is, you know, man your God or am I your God? And I realized like, dang, I, I got to change my per my perspective about things and, and realize that fear can't control me and that the perception that I have and you know, rejection that I thought I was experiencing, it was just re re um, direction. So I realized like, okay, I'm not being rejected here. God is just directing me the way he wants me to go. A lot of times like close doors. Direction. Yes. Come on, listen, come on, come on. I love it. You know what I'm saying? I really seriously thought I'm like, oh, certain opportunities that I really wanted and I really wanted to take place and to happen for me didn't happen the way I thought it would go. And now, I look back and um, I'm like, thank God I avoided that, you know? And so I'm like, man, I was really protected in that moment. God came through for me. <laughs> and he did that so, when you were obedient. That's yes. it. Absolutely. Yes. When God gives vision, he also gives provision. Correct. So your new single, Yahweh, what does it mean? What do you want your fans and listeners to get from the song? Um, to honestly, literally, don't quit. Um, number two, also to just to know honestly that you're God sent. At the end of the day, if God is sending you to do something, just do it. Um, I don't care if you're afraid, if you're afraid of what people are going to say. Um, if there's a spirit of jealousy or hatred against you, then you're on the right track. Okay. Yeah. You're doing good. If you feeling any type of little resistance um, against what you're doing, then don't confuse resistance from, you know, outside forces or even in your mind. Don't confused resistance with that's a moment for me to stop so Yahweh is literally about coming in to realize like wait a minute am am I going to step in the way of what God wants for me am I going to allow um you know outside influences to stop me from what God wants me to do or am I just going to be obedient am I just going to go for it at the end of the day Moses had like he was stuttering Stanley okay Moses yeah. was stuttering. Yeah. he had a speech impediment and and um you know he said listen God I don't know if you want to send me have you heard me speak lately and he said, yeah, I'm sending you, you know? Um, so that's what that Yahweh song is about. It's really just regardless of what you think, just go for it. Do what God is saying, do. Amen. So yeah. now you're touching on an uh, area that is very near and dear to me. You have a clothing line, God. Yes, I love fashion, okay? I can tell. Now what shifted you to simultaneously pursue both? You know what? I was like, after doing this for about four years, I'm like, I need some merch. This, this is, I'm being honest. I was like, I need some, I love that word merch. I was like, yeah. I need to come up with some, <laughs> some merch. And um, I'm thinking of all these different ideas and I was struggling and I was thinking about people love my hair, but I'm like, do I really want to be combing out my hair all the time, reviewing products? No, I do not. <laughs> I barely like doing it now. So I was thinking of all these different things and um, I finally kind of just said, well, I don't know. I just kind of, you know, I'm trying to force something that's not there. 
and my husband who has been supporting me since 2008 to current and so on. Shout out to Benjamin Williams who's Shout tuned in. Shout out to my husband, <laughs> yes. And so um, he said, what about Godsend? It was a brand that he had for 10 years that he never done anything with. He's never done mm -hmm. anything with. And I'm like, babe, now is the time you supported me. Let's support this brand. And it literally, Yahweh was out long before the name God sent. Uh, I, mean, I mean, Yahweh came out, but God sent was a part and there long before Yahweh. So it just happened mm -hmm. to work, you know? And I'm like, wow, this is kingdom. So it's mm -hmm. on the website, it's my whole family. When things are supposed to work, there's no effort to it. It just works. Right. Right. Now, what, what's your clothing line? <clears throat> what do you sell? Men's clothes, women's clothes, and how can people purchase it? Yeah. Okay. So listen, we want to sell to everybody. We started out with men and women's clothes because, you know, ultimately I wanted something for myself, wanted something for my husband and, you know, we have two children. And so on, on the website, you'll see our whole family we started with all the models are just us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you see my kids, they're they're gorgeous. They're absolutely stunning. I'm like, geez, okay, we got some in-house models. But um, yeah, for it's for men and women. We have a leather bag. That is one of our main pieces that we absolutely love. We have this genuine leather bag that has God sent. Um, and I promise you, it, you when you go to this website, you will absolutely love what you see. Can I can I ask you something? Yeah. Do you have that bag in your video? I do. That's the yes. bag. Listen, come on. That bag is hot. Yeah, that bag is hot. Can you give me the bag? Let me yeah, tell you. Yeah, I want to see that bag. But while he's getting the bag, I got a question for you. How do you balance it all? Wife, mm -hmm. mother, mm -hmm. business owner, uh -huh. artist, mm -hmm. writer. Uh-huh. Uh, well, <laughs> honestly, you, you got different days. The seven days in the week. You cook on some days, and then you tell your kids, hey, y'all need to learn how to cook <laughs> on some other days. At night, you write some music, you know? So honestly, you just really kind of just um, float around the time, and you just be inspired, not trying to force anything. This is the bag, y'all. Oh, wow. So this I like that. Oh, my some God. good craftsmanship. It's green oh, on the inside. Look. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Yes. Can yes, you turn yes, around? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Oh, it's a book bag. Yeah, I like that. Bag. Or if you if you really fancy and you wanna you wanna be a uh you know you go to the workforce, you can go ahead and turn this into a crossbody. You can turn mm. uh, turn it to over the shoulder. So this bag literally, <laughs> oh, um, you can wear it however you want. So yeah. So you guys go on her website. That versatility matters. Yes. And, you know, I am so excited about this family business oriented family love oriented particularly I, I, i'm excited about that all the time but as our families start to dismantle from external situations that we cannot control right now it's so inspiring to see how you all are holding it together and oh. being an inspiration oh yes i mean literally like people are in shelter and care with, with right. family members and it does one of two things it either brings them closer together or places a wedge that they may not have seen that was there in the first place. So I am so excited that you all are doing the former and not the yes. woo -woo. Now Let's listen, go. we got viewers talking about ordering that bag. I look, wanted to be the only one with it, but I guess listen, I'll see it. <laughs> well, listen, we're going to come out with more colors. I'm going to come out with a women's purse. My husband, Ben, we call him Uncle Ben, but Ben was like, you know what? He said, um, we need to come out with a purse. I said, now, babe, let me tell you about purses. Purses are like shoes. You can't just, it ain't just one type purse. There's totes, there's different types of, of uh, uh, brands and, and, and styles. So, yeah. We're going to have to listen, get the. Jay, get ahead. you one of them bags now. Get you one of them bags. Yeah. <laughs> but but that's that's unisex. Like, I could get one too, yeah. right? Oh. It's unisex. It is a unisex bag. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so listen. Because that bag is awesome. Yes. Now, Jokia, I like to shift. We, okay. we, you know, I like the bag, but I'm loving your voice, and oh. I have been waiting to hear you live. So, you ready to rock it out for us? 
You ain't said nothing but a word. <laughs> <laughs> well, Facebook, you see it live right here on the Brunch Bunch. Let's give a warm welcome for a live performance by Joe Keo. Yes. Woo, 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 woo. Yes. You guys, Take this song away. is called Yahweh. Uh, can you guys hear that? Yep. Okay. Love came rushing in, so fear couldn't have me. Thought about giving up, but walked in where you promised me. In the beginning, you print on me to establish purpose in me. And then that's when you spoke to me and told me to walk in believe. Yeah, who do you say? That's what he said to me. Yeah, who do you say? That was absolutely positively amazing. Yes. You hired a lot of people, particularly not only with your melodious, magnificent voice, 
but also oh. your business acumen, your ability to touch people. I feel your spirit through these through these waves, honey. Yes. Oh, man. No. She says that your music was very uplifting, and she's definitely going to buy your CD. Where oh, can the people you. buy your music? Thank you. Listen, you guys can get the music from www.godsensebw.com. Um, and you guys also can get it from anywhere music is released. So if you listen to Apple, iTunes, anywhere music that you hear music or that you love to stream, um, you guys can get it from there. Um, you can stay connected with me at Jokia Music. Uh, that's on everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. If you talk to me, I talk back. Okay. So I love to interact. I think yes. everything is about relationship. And so um, I don't take those moments for granted. So for sure, reach out to me. I want to talk to y'all for sure. Listen, and she's not, when she says she's interacting, as soon as I put her picture fly up, she was the first to like, the first to comment, the first to share. I was yes. like, go ahead. <laughs> you know, this your humility. humility. And it also shows your God side. Because a lot of times when people got 2 million followers, <laughs> they don't think that they have to interact like that. And that's why you're propelling to new heights. Your increase is definitely secure. Wow. I love yes. y'all. I think uh, we listen, love you. Listen, you know what? Um, we take for granted that when people have um, a platform and we're invited on, you know, me being able to be introduced to the Brunch Bunch family, I mean, that's huge to me. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's everything we do is about relationship. And so um, I'm actually, I'm absolutely excited. So what I, somebody here, Anthony, I said, it said, he said, don't forget your key alive and lyrics. Um, so one of the things that I do is on social media, um, sometimes I'll get on, I'll play guitar and you come on and you write some lyrics, you, whatever the what? lyrics are. Yeah. Oh, we go in together. It's about community. It's about relationship. Um, that's what, everything we do. Every business we have, it's about contact with someone else. And that's what God wants from, from me. That's what he wants from us. What we're doing right now is relationship and I, we're meeting each other. We family now. We cousins. Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> Listen, I'm so excited that we're connecting. When you're in Chicago, you had to join us live in studio and bring the oh, guitar. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you, said, you said something right there that God is using you. And so before we sign off, before we go our separate ways, hopefully not for long, but before we go our separate ways, right? What's the word that you want to give to the believers, to the listeners that they can hold on to today? Because I know you have one. Oh my gosh. Uh, you know what? Mm -hmm. Uh, my friend posted um, something today and I felt like it was exactly correct. Don't feel pressured um, to, to have a word, a godly word about the pandemic. If God isn't releasing anything for you, it's okay. Don't feel pressure. Like you got to come out with a mighty word for the pandemic. If, preach the gospel. Preach That's love. It. Just the message of love. At this time, we can take advantage of love, and and love is shown through a different um, different ways. One of the things that you guys were doing was educating people today. Um, the way you guys were going in about giving facts and sharing, hey, how Black people are being affected. That's love. That's relationship, um, and that's okay. You don't have to have a you know a prophetic that you know because you're gonna force yourself to make up lies and don't do it. Yep. Just, just <laughs> preach love. Love somebody. Love. Somebody. I like. Well, I like what you said. Just keep preaching the Bible. Keep listen. Grass may wither, birds may fade away, but the word of God will stand forever. Come on, come, come on, action, Jackson. Yeah, come yeah, listen. Send send your offering to nothing but the truth. So help me, God, ministry. <laughs> oh my you have been an amazing guest, and yes, you your auntie, your mom, whomever. Because you know we're cousins now. Tell her we said hi. <laughs> yeah, tell Auntie we said thank you. And your husband being shout out yes. behind every strong woman is a strong man. Yes, listen. Yes, he's always with me. Yes. Stay blessed, stay encouraged, and stay in touch with us. Absolutely. Yes. I love y'all family. Love, love you. you. Thank you. Thank you. What an amazing experience for, for you guys. Thank you so much for interacting. Jokia Music on IG. She's Jokia Music on Facebook. She's Jokia Music on Twitter. So you don't have to think of but one thing, and that's Jokia Music. Shout out to Virgo. I'm getting that bag. I know the bag is hot, right? It looks yes. like it's handmade, too. It does. It's good craftsmanship on it. That's yes. not like that pleather you burn, you know, rub it too hard and it'll burn you. Hmm. Okay, come through. 
A shout out to Viral, Pastor mm -hmm. Apostle Power, for bringing all the best guests. We certainly do love you. And believers, we love you. And always we want to encourage you to give love 24 alive. Lead with love, land on love, and pretty soon love will conquer all. You'll know when it's love because it won't be a confused message. It'll be crystal clear. So I want you to be crystal clear, Action Jackson. Uh, gotcha. I love you. I love you too, and I love the brunch bunch. I do too. Listen, tomorrow we got a hot show for you, so make sure that you tune in. Set your alarms for us tomorrow because always it's our aim to send you back better than you came. I love you, Modi, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Yes. Love came rushing in, so fear couldn't have me. I thought about giving up, but once in what you promised me, in the beginning you reaped on me to establish purpose in me. Yeah. Then it's when you spoke to me and told me to walk and believe. Yeah, and who do you say I am? Lead me to still waters, lead me to your altar, Yahweh, Yahweh, that's what I call you. Lead me to still waters, lead me to your altar, Yahweh, Yahweh, and you will believe. Love can rush in, in, so fear couldn't have me. I thought about giving up, but watching what you promised me. In the beginning, you went on me to establish purpose in me. Yeah. And then it's when you spoke to me and told me to walk and believe. Yeah. And who do you say I am? That's what he said to me, yeah, yeah. and who do you